everybody, so I have this theory that if somebody sometime, somewhere can do something, it is humanly possible. And I'm a human, so therefore I should be able to do it. And I bring this attitude to everything. I brought it to welding and I'm bringing it to 3D printing. It is very, very doable. However, if you want to sit there and learn 3D printing, so gather all the information that you possibly can in order to become a master 3D printer, all that's going to happen is you're going to go, hmm, yeah, that's a lot, I think I'll leave that. And that's not the way to start. The way to start is to make a start. Turns out it's really stupidly simple. Pick yourself a printer you like the look of, pick yourself a filament you think is going to be good, and get something from Thingiverse and print it, and you will be printing. We've been doing that for something like three months or so. We've learnt little bits as we've gone along. I haven't tried to learn everything straight away to do it perfectly. I've tried to make a start, do it and learn as I go. I've had two failed prints in all that time, which is ridiculous when you think about it. The printing has been stupidly simple and of course all we've been doing is printing things from Thingiverse that other people have designed. Now, we've been able to do some pretty interesting projects with that, but of course part of that learning experience is the next step. And the next step that you're going to want to take is modifying what other people have done. Because whenever you pick something that somebody else has done, it never quite matches what you actually want. So the thing you're going to want to be able to do is modify it. So take this for example. This is a hand generator. It'll turn about 4,000 RPM, produce about 40 volts or so, something like that. Hand generators are fun, but I'd much prefer if I could put it onto a windmill, or maybe a water wheel, or maybe a bicycle. And what I've got is this. This is the hand crank, and it's got this bit sticking out, and that I don't want. I want to be able to bolt something on there, like a wind turbine. So I need to modify that part. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, to modify that, what we want is Tinkercad. Tinkercad is an Autodesk product. To find it, go to Google, type in Tinkercad, hit enter and click on the first entry and that will take you straight there. It's an Autodesk product and it's part of their commitment to STEM and online education. It's free to use and it's awesome. You have to register, you do that by entering your email address and when you're ready, click on new 3D design and it will open the workspace for you. The workspace is that piece of graph paper that we can see and we can move around the workspace using the mouse. If you click and hold down the right key, you'll be able to rotate the workspace around. If you scroll in and out, you'll be able to zoom to various features. Here, you have the ability to look dead on front or on top so that you can get different views and zoom straight to them. It's all about exploring, guys. We're going to cover some of the basic stuff, but really get into it and explore. It's designed for kids, so it's a little bit cartoony, but it really is immensely helpful for that intermediate step of using what other people have done to modify what other people have done. When you're ready, we want to get our file. For that, you click Import. It'll open up this box and ask you to choose a file. So let's choose a file. We'll choose the file that we want. And that is crank, because we're going to modify this crank handle so that we can use it for something else like a wind turbine or a bicycle or a water wheel. Upload it. It gives you here the choice between millimetres and inches, scale 100%, leave the scale alone, and it tells you the dimensions of the thing. Now, there are some restrictions on what you can put in here. I think it's no greater than 23 megabytes as a file size, and I can't remember how many polygons. But... It'll tell you if the thing is too big. Mostly, though, it won't be. So you import it and give a little bit of time. You can see here it's actually importing the STL file. And when it's done, there we go. We have our crank handle with some bits and pieces missing. These artifacts are just to do with the import and won't worry us. But there it is. There's our crank handle. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of this bit here. The important ones for us are these two here. These are effectively cut tools. So if we click on the box, pop the box onto the work plane, and then use the handle here to drag that to the size that we want. And you can see at the bottom we've got handles. There we go. We can take that and we can move that all the way up to cover the bottom part 
of the crank handle so we can spin that around we can see we've got a little too high see where that box is so click on it grab the handle and move it down a little bit until we get it to just about where we want it which is right there then go out somewhere here highlight the whole lot and here you can see the group tool click on group it'll flash red for a moment and then the whole of the handle disappears and we're left with just our cog click on the cog press command d and it will create a copy of the cog and drop it to the bottom now this shape is actually made out of a number that we've actually grouped so it would be a pain to do the next bit using that shape because the other bits that we've done might interfere. So all we do is export it. You'll see here the file name. And we get a choice what we can export it as. We want to export it as an STL file. And there we go, preparing model for export. The next thing we're going to do is re-import that. Okay, so now we've got a clean workspace, we can re-import that file. It might seem a bit of a nuisance to you to export and re-import, but it just gives you one file to work with. And having that one file means that you don't have to worry about moving absolutely everything else. So find the exported file, which is right there, upload it, import it, give it a second to import. And there we go, we now have this as a whole one piece STL, or at least Tinkercad understands it that way, but we need to put some holes in it because we've basically got rid of our handle, created a bigger cog, and now we need some holes in it so we can bolt it to stuff like wind turbine blades or something like that. In order to do that, we need to be a little bit more accurate. So you click on that tool there, which is the ruler tool, go up to the corner, click on the ruler, here you've got use midpoint as its reference point, which is exactly what it'll use. So click on midpoint and then click on your piece. And you will find you've suddenly got all these numbers absolutely everywhere. This piece of graph paper is 200 by 200 and the center point is at 100. If we look there, we'll see it's at minus 99. It's minus because it's going from this point here where I set the ruler. If I put the ruler in the midpoint, it would be zero. But I put the ruler here, I could drag the ruler there if I wanted to. Minus 99, however, is just a little off center. So click on it and type in minus 100. And you'll see it moves a little bit. So now the center of this is at the center of the graph paper and it is at 100 by 100. So we've got something now that we can work with because we have a frame of reference and it's also showing the size of the piece that we're working with here. If I hover over those figures then that will change to red meaning I can either use the mouse and hold the handles and drag it up and down or I can type directly into the box there to change the height and to change that size. So we'll see there that it's actually 36.58 millimeters tall. I think that's a bit high. So we can change that height to 30 millimeters or three centimeters. And when we move out that box, it will change its height. Now it has a midpoint and you'll see there, it's just hovering a work, uh, above the work plane and that's this number here. So if we change that to 15, it'll drop down to the work plate. There we go, it's now on the bench, on the plate itself, and we've got it three centimetres high. We don't want to change the size, obviously, because we're going to use it with everything else, and we want it to fit back in the original machine. However, we do want to put holes in there. If we click on our shape so that we highlight the shape, you'll notice something else there. You see there's a couple of arrows, and if I hover over those arrows, we get this circle design around it. What you do is you click and hold. As you move now, you will rotate it. If you're inside the circle, you rotate it at 22 and a half degree increments. If you're outside the circle, you rotate it in one degree increments. And if we rotate it so that we get it level, there we go, so that these lines now come level with those bits there, then we've got it at 90 degrees, which is going to make our next job much easier because we want some holes in there. So we... One way to think about these is kind of as erasers. Let's grab a hole, 
or a cylinder if you like, plonk it back on there, and because the ruler's engaged, of course, we get all the sizes. We want an 8mm hole because you want to put an 8mm bolt in it if you want 6. Type that as 6. Notice, incidentally, they're not locked, it's actually made an ellipse. That's really useful for doing things like arches. Now we've got our 8mm hole, if we spin that around a bit we can see that it's 20 high and that's 30, so let's change that to 31 and it'll poke out a little bit. And it also goes from the midpoint, so if we look at that it's poking down below the plane a little bit, so we need to change that, say to 15.5, and that's because that's at 31 and then it sits it on the plane. We click on this, then we know this is 100 by 100. Back on this one, we can see the location here is minus 23 by 175. We want to bring it down to that center line, which is why we rotated everything. So we put that at minus 100, then it will move down. There it is. Now we've got 175, let's change that to 160. And we have a hole. <laughs> There we go, we want to repeat that four more times so we can bolt it in place, or bolt something in place. So if we click on that so it's highlighted and duplicate it, it will duplicate, and this time it's at minus 100, it's at 160, so let's change that to 40. Bingo! We've got two holes! And we do that with the other two holes, only with this one of course we change it to um, 100 and minus 40. In fact, let's do that. <laughs> there we go. There it is. And we get our next hole in place. Last one. Duplicate it. And this time we want it at minus. And there we go. Four holes. Now we've got that done, we can export it. STL. When it's ready, we can drop it into Cura. Okay, I've opened Elegube Cura, find the part we just exported. It exports to your downloads, incidentally, and I've moved it to this here. Open it, allow it to render and drop in, and there it is! There's the part we made! A cog that will fit on the machine with four holes in it so I can bolt it to something else, like a bicycle, a wind turbine, or a water wheel. But there we go, we've now made our own part. Okay, so that part is now ready to print and we've created our own part and adapted something else. Now, Tinkercad's pretty awesome and I've seen people oh, merge parts, take one part from one STL, take another part, create a whole new part, uh, use bits of parts, so we used a part of a part if you like, it's exactly what we did, and it is extremely useful to uh, use and because it's for STEM and for kids extremely easy without cluttering up all of that stuff. Now Tinkercad isn't an answer it's a step on your journey because one of the things people forget is to have fun to enjoy the experience they sit down at the computer they're wearing their hair shirt the whip is right there and come hell or high water they're going to learn CAD, and of course what they get is a, a long time of very frustrating experiences. You've got to remember, it's an elephant burger, uh, and eating a burger made out of an elephant is done one bit at a time. Don't, don't forget that, and forget to have fun on your journey. Do things where you're going to get success and therefore rewards. Don't line yourself up for failure. 3D printing. Begin by printing what other people have done. Find things you like, you enjoy. Move on to something like Tinkercad. Adapt it to be things that you want in a really easy way and merge things together, play with things, print them and have fun. And in the meantime, 
You can be learning this wonderful all singing, all dancing, CAD program, whatever it is. But if you're doing and you're enjoying, the learning will just happen all by itself. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like, subscribe and click the notifications bell. <laughs>